Yeah, so we're now we're on, page, we're on verse 10. And they shall be as nothing, and those who strive with you shall perish. Okay, then it says you shall seek them and not find them. That's verse 12. You shall seek them and you shall not find them, and they will be as nothing, as a non-existent thing. So the phrase shall be as nothing, or you, you will not see them, is repeated twice. To show the certainty of the greatness of the of um the enemy's destruction, and it's telling us it gives us a, a a glimpse into how God how God works when He's delivering someone when He's delivering something, um He He, the way God delivers and saves it would it it, it seems as though nothing happened previously. So, for example, when Jesus calmed the raging sea, the way it was so calm that it looked as if there was no storm to begin with. You know, when Neman was healed, the Bible says that his skin was like a newborn skin, like a baby's skin. So God is a God of salvation and restoration. He's able to restore and bring things to a place of rest and peace as though there was never a storm before. Um, I, I was even reflecting on what happened to me when I was in uni. I was making... A hot, a hot water bottle and um i poured the hot water on myself on my on my chest and i just remember like because obviously it was during covid so we couldn't even go to like the hospital and stuff like that so i called the number and i told her like these are my symptoms and said okay you should come to the to the thingy today but i think i also called my mom and she told me to just use an oil on my on on my chest which I did and the pain kind of the pain went down and then over the weeks it was like peeling um it was peeling so I was just using I was just I was just using Vaseline and like oil to make sure that it doesn't get dry but if you look at the place where the bone where the water poured it actually looks there's not you there's no way you can tell that water actually poured there like hot water I mean it's just it's like my skin does not even there's no scar at all, not a single scar. So that's just to show that when God um restores, when he saves, it is a total healing, a total restoration. And I pray that that will be our portion in Jesus' name. Um verse 13, for I the Lord your God will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. I may I pray that the Lord. Uh, we should start. I mean, these one of the things I love about Isaiah is there's so many scriptures. I mean, yes, we're studying it to understand, you know, who God is, as we do when we read our Bible. But there's so many um, scriptures that you can hold on to. So I want us to not just, um, not just come to this particular Bible study and any Bible study after this. Maybe I don't know how you've been coming to the Bible studies before, but Luckily for me, I've I've been part of those who prepared the slides and stuff. So I, I have to read it through. And I've just been, as I'm reading it through, I've just been collecting gems along the way. So let's any maybe there might be something you're going through that and you what we need is the word of God to stand on that we can even take back to God in prayer and say, God, this is what you said about me, and use that in the place of prayer for whatever situation that we are you might be going through so it, make sure you pay attention and um um and focus um and hear what the lord is saying so verse 30, verse 13 for i the lord your god will hold your right hand saying to you fear not i will help you verse 14 fear not you worm you worm or warm depending on your accent you worm <laughs> jacob you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord of and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So again, look, it says here, your Redeemer. You're the one that he's the one that saves, he's the one, he's the one that redeems. He says here, you worm Jacob, meaning that a worm, have you have you ever seen it? I'm sure we've seen a worm before. It has no strength, it doesn't have any bones. It's just like if you step on it, it there's no resistance. It just in, in when it rains. <laughs> When it rains in school, when the children are playing outside and it rains, the worms always come out. I don't know why, but they end up, I don't know why, but I think, I don't know how it happens. Whenever it rains, you see loads of snails and you see loads of worms. And the children will just be picking the worms, 
um kicking the worms using sticks to 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 cut them in half kids are the kids are lethal man <laughs> and we as teachers will be saying leave the worm alone but all the children will just be poking it pulling it tugging at it and the worm cannot do anything it's just there you know like completely defenseless um and so that's god was calling them that not in a way of 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 being like oh you guys are worthless but rather trying to explain to them how they are without him and that's what the bible says with without me you can do nothing just like a, a worm cannot defend himself against anybody or anything a bird an animal whatever whoever comes to eat him he just just he's the, the low the he's the he's the lowest animal in the food chain so just like that without god we actually cannot do much if not anything so god is saying that i will help you you don't need to worry about that i will i will defend you so god is our strength and he's god and god is a god of strength god is strength so he's able to lend us his own strength without waning in his own and i think that was one of one of the key messages in that final chapter in verse 40 um Yes, in verse 40, 28, it says, Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. So because God never faints, he's never weary, he's able to give power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. So God is a God of strength and power. And so he's able to give us his power, his strength, because and he will not in himself he will know he will not um grow weary um so that is um verse 14 if we move on to verse 15 it says behold i will make you into a new dressing sledge so now they are they were described as a worm but in this verse he's now saying that you're no longer going to be a worm you're going to be a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth and you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make them make the hills like chaff. Amen. So I, for myself, I'm holding on to this scripture. I might be weak now. I might be not where I need to be, but God is going to make me into a threshing sledge. So whatever mountain, and it says, and beat down. Um, yes, and you shall thresh the mountains. You know, thresh, because threshing sledge is usually for wheat, right? It's for farming, but here this threshing sledge is going to be used to thresh mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. And I pray that the Lord makes us into those threshing sledges in Jesus' name. And then it says in 16, you shall winnow them, the wind shall carry them away, so you shall grind them to powder, and the whirlwind will shall scatter them, and you shall rejoice in the Lord the, and glory in the holy one of Israel. So, what used to intimidate the Israelites, they became you know, you they were able, they were given, they were made into beings that were able to intimidate their enemies. And I pray that the Lord will do that with us as well in Jesus' name. So we need to trust in Him. When we trust in Him, when we put our faith in Him, that, that is when He's able to walk out something out of us to make us strong. So even in these tough, tough, tough times, it's actually a time of process and a time that when we come out, we're actually stronger. Um and when so that when even more more comes in the future we are able to we have the capacity to handle them in jesus name and then we move on to verse 17 the poor and needy seek water but there is none their tongues fill or for thirst i the lord will hear them i the god of israel will not forsake them so god will always answer us so we know the story of um um i believe her name is hey guy but i'm not i don't uh, hug i don't remember um the woman that um abraham that sarah told that sarah told abraham to sleep with so that so that he can have a son um i'm gonna get her name now hagar yes hagar so yes she was crying out to the lord for water because she even looked away from her son because she knew that his, he was going to die but god saw her and he gave her water for her son so we for long as long as we are thirsty to God. So what happens is when when we stop asking, that's when we we need to be consistent in our asking, because Bible says, "Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, 
because they will be filled. So once we continue to ask God to fill us, he will answer us in Jesus' name. Then we have chapter 8, sorry, verse 18. I will open rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of valleys. I will make the pools of water and the dry land springs of water. One thing I noticed from what we are reading here is how God is not just a God of just supplying you what you need. The Bible tells us that he does exceedingly and abundantly above what we ask and can even imagine. So it goes from, if you, if you go back a couple of verses, it said, warm Jacob to threshing sledge. So it goes from an animal with no teeth. The worms do not have any teeth. They don't have any bones. There's no, there's no structure to them to becoming a threshing sledge. And then not just any type of threshing sledge that can just take out wheat, but a threshing sledge that takes out mountains. So God, if you, as you can see, God is not just delivering them on what they need, by what they need, but he's giving them more than even what they ask for. You see here, he's saying, he's causing verse 17. He says, they needed water. They needed water. That's what they, that's what they wanted, actually. They actually needed water in verse 17. But in verse 18, God is saying he's going to give them rivers. He's going to give them fountains. He's going to give them pools of water, springs of water. So sometimes when God, when we're going through something, and so we, we just want the answer to that particular thing. But let's begin to try and see beyond just that particular thing. Let's try and see beyond what, okay, now I will get this. If you're praying for a job, I'll get this job. I'll get this um, uh, money or whatever, or I'll get this, whatever, whatever. But what is, what is the bigger picture? What is God trying to really give me, you know? And, um, and when we begin to put the eyes on those things, I begin, I believe it will put things in perspective and give us more hope and say, Lord, I know I'm asking for this, but I know that what is the real reason or what is um the the greater um what is that exceeding thing that you want to do in my life because here we see that they needed water but god is here trying to give them fountains and um, and and pools of water amen so i don't really know what to really make of that but what i what i'm just noticing here is just how god is over answering their prayer how they are looking for deliverance but god is saying not only are you going to be delivered but you're going to become a deliverer you're going to bash you're going to bash down mountains so i believe that when we're in the place of prayer sometimes we should ex um broaden our horizon and look um forward and look above the challenge and say okay what is god wants to to give me here like for example i don't know if you remember if you read the story about caleb when caleb was distributing the the land between the israelites i believe it was Josh, caleb or joshua or was it joshua there was both of them sure but i can't remember the story very well but one of his daughters caleb's daughters axa came to caleb and she said she now asked for a portion and she didn't ask for just any type of place because she just wanted to have land. She asked for a place actually that had lots of rivers and streams. And I think I see what she, she was, other people may have just thought, oh, fertile ground. I want someone that's very fertile. I want this, I want that. But she, I think she had a vision in mind where she's like, okay, after I go, I want a place where my family that's coming after me will never lack. We'll never, never have to ask anybody for water because there's water where they live. So when we're asking God for things sometimes, let's try and begin to see beyond those things and see what God, what is the reason why, is this what God wants to give me or should I begin to continue to press for greater things? Amen. And this can be physical things. This can be spiritual things. It's, this, it's, all, this, it's all the same. Um, I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the axia tree the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set it in the desert and the cypress tree and the pine tree and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this and the Holy One of Israel has created it. So this um, scripture talks about how in the wilderness, there will still be 
there will still be so much um uh so much life amen and this takes me back to the scripture in isaiah 32 verse 15 and 16 um which says well i think it's, it's, it's quite popular but it says until the spirit be poured out from upon us from on high and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and the fruitful field is counted as a forest so the, we see that the source of this forest was not water per se it was the spirit of god so in verse in this i'm i'm going i'm talking from verse isaiah 32 verse 15 it says until the spirit is poured so the what the source of the life that's manifest in this um in this wilderness is not water per se so we can even say that these 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 open rivers and desolate heights is talking about a spiritual fountain a spiritual river that will be the reason as to why, I mean, in this context, as to why the Israelites will be so successful, but also we can apply that to our own lives. In a wilderness, the wilderness could be the economic situation of a country. The wilderness could be anything. It could be someone's womb. It could be anything. It could be your job life. It could be whatever. And everybody else seems to be having certain struggles. It could be your spiritual, it could be one spiritual life where everybody in the area might be having a, a, a particular issue. But we see here that the source of this water is not physical water, it's a spiritual water. And that's what we, is described in Isaiah 32 verse 15. Until that water, which is the spirit of God, is poured out, then the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. And if we jump, if we jump from, sorry, if we now go back to where we're reading as Isaiah 41 verse 19 is now talking about all the different trees that he will plant in the wilderness. So where is the water coming from? I believe that this water is talking about spiritual things. It's talking about a spiritual flow of the spirit that will, even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of dryness, where everybody else is, com is complaining about, oh, there's nothing here, there's nothing there. As people of God, if, if we are, if the Spirit of God has been poured upon us, we should be experiencing um, um, increase, even though everywhere else is there's wilderness. Amen. So this place is talking about spiritual fruits, spiritual um, a where we have been blessed in the midst of of wilderness, and the way that we are doing that is it, the way one can do that is when there's a, a supply of the spirit upon that person's life so and if and how do we get that supply of the spirit is through is just to through prayer if you look back if you go back to that isaiah 32 it was telling the women but obviously that can be applied to everybody but it was it was saying to the women that these women that are at ease okay they're at ease you know maybe I don't know who this might be for, but could be for, it's, I believe it's for everybody. Where you say, "Oh well, everybody is everybody is struggling with it, Shah." So me too. We like is is where everybody's experiencing it. Yeah, it's true. Everybody's experiencing it, but that does not have to be your experience. It's because it says in Isaiah thirty-two verse nine, it says, "Rise up, you women who are at ease." So yeah, oh everybody is when they when they come to the UK, they struggle or eh. That's how it is now. After a while, everything will start. I mean, there's, 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 there's truth in that, but at the same time, God is, like we said before, God is not just ready to answer just the simple prayers. As we see, he's answering them so much more than they're asking for. Amen. So that means that God is, 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 has more than enough for all of us. And there's a reason behind him giving us more because he wants i believe god wants to start something with us because if he's giving if you ask if you ask god for a cup of water and he gives you a cup of water then you can drink and be satisfied because you only needed it but if god, if you ask god for a cup of water and he gave you a river 
that means that he wants you to not just you know what's the word um not just satisfy yourself but satisfy others amen let's move on well, it's taking time so verse 20 that they may see and know yes we, we read this already at the holy one exactly so as if you are kind of pers- if as the way the everything is now and you are being fruitful in the midst of wilderness in the midst of dryness people will have to ask you how are you doing it you know because and you and you would tell them i think pastor toby said this before but i don't know at last time but you actually only the really thing the only thing you can actually say that is god because really when the spirit is poured out upon you and you're doing things you know you just you just have to say that is is god because that's the truth i believe it was i think it was obadiah when he said to when he said to elijah he said he's got like he told i think it's obadiah i don't think his name is obadiah i always forget the names of people but um he said elijah said i, w- I want to speak to your king today and the man said, ah, you, that the hand, the spirit of the Lord will take you somewhere and I won't know where you're going. So the same way, the spirit of the Lord is, um, it should be a, 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 so the, every, the reason why Elijah was able to move at such a pace and go from one place to another, because the spirit of the Lord was upon him. And so when the spirit of the Lord is upon us, people will, will say, I oh, know this person, the hand of the Lord is upon him. And I pray that, or him or her, and I pray that that will be a portion in Jesus name, 41 present your case says the lord bring forth your strong reason says the king of jacob so this is god speaking um i i like this verse a lot i and it's good to use this in the in place of prayer especially when you're asking god for something he said if you used to be bringing the word of god to him and you say lord this is what you said in your word concerning me and you pray on it so again the lord is saying to bring forth your strong reasons let them bring forth and show us what will happen. Let them show former things, what they were, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them or declare to us things to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter that we may know that you are God. Yes, do good or do evil that we may be dismayed to see it together. Verse 24. Yeah, I'm, I'm going through it fast now because of time. Indeed, you are nothing and your work is nothing. He who chooses you is an abomination i have raised up one from the north and he shall come from the rising of the sun he shall call on my name and he shall come against princes as though mortar as as the potter treads um as potter treads clay that's 26 who has declared from the beginning that we may know and former times are we and former times we may say he is righteous surely there is no one who shows surely there is no one who declares surely there is no one who hears your words so it's trying to invest verse 20 then verse 27 says the first time i look the first time i said design look there they are and i will give to jerusalem one who brings good tidings for I looked and there was no man. I looked among them, but there was no counselor. Who, who, when, who, when I asked of them, could answer a word? Indeed, they are all worthless. Their works are nothing. Their molded images are wind and confusion. So those, those verses are just saying, can, you, can, you, can these people tell us the future? Can they tell us what's going to happen hereafter? Let them show us something. And then in the end, they're saying that these people cannot show us anything. They cannot because they these people um, are, are serving a God that is worthless and their images are wind and confusion. And I mean, it's, 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 it's by just looking at what they do, you can, you can tell that they are confused. I mean, I was, I was thinking, I was, re- I was thinking about, you know, when we go do that palm reading or what's that thing called? Um, horoscope. And they now tell you the personality traits of people who are born between this time and this time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I look at them and a lot of them are quite similar. Like a lot of the horror, horoscope personality traits are quite similar. I'm like, there's no distinction here. The, you guys just made this, this whole thing up. So there's a lot of confusion. There's nothing stable about it. It's always, it's always, you know, changing. Whereas, the word of God over our lives has not changed ever since ever since he has spoken it before time began. So 
that brings us to the end of chapter 41 and moves us into 42. I'm going to try my best to get it all done today. Um, but so far, do we have any questions or contributions from anybody? Please, this is your time. Oh, qu yeah, questions, please, contributions. This is your chance to share. Anyone? No? Okay. So I will continue from chapter 42. Behold, my servants whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him, and he shall, he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. So chapter 42 speaks of Jesus a lot, at least at the beginning verses. And it says a few things in this first scripture. It says here that the whole my servants whom I uphold, my elect one, so my chosen one, um, on in whom my soul delights. So this is God speaking that God said that he he delights in him from his soul. So God was God was pleased, really truly pleased with Jesus. And not just because it was his son, actually, but because Jesus offered the perfect sacrifice through the Holy Ghost to reconcile us back to God. So Jesus was not just the one that God delight, delighted in because he's the son. If Jesus did not do what he was supposed to do, God would not delight in him. So I have put my spirit upon him. You see that in Luke, where when Jesus was baptized and, he, and John said that I saw the, the Holy Spirit descended bodily in the form of a dove upon him. And that means, it also means that it stayed upon him. It rested on him. It didn't come and go. It stayed upon him. And he will bring forth justice to, to Gentiles. So the the purpose of Jesus coming was to bring justice to the just to Gentiles. So to bring them in to the way and into the fold, into into God, to reconcile them to God. He will not cry out, nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. So, um. Yes, we see that when Jesus was being, um, what's the word, beaten, bruised, battered, he did not raise his voice. He did not raise his voice um, to in protest. He didn't raise his voice in calling down fire to, um, to, uh, to destroy them all. He, in humility, in, in humility, um, he, um, what's it called? He took on all those things so that he can be the perfect sacrifice. His humility had to be total. Um, his humility, his humility had to be total. So, a bruised reed he will not break. And his smoking flax, he will not quench. So he bruised reed. Remember, the Bible talks of how he, 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 they used a reed to hit his head. Um, but he did not resist um, that reed when it came upon his head. He did not resist it. Amen. This all speaks of all the things that. Um, Jesus went through. He will not fail nor be discouraged. So even with all of this, he will not fail nor be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. So, and the coastland shall wait for his law. So going back to verse one, remember it says was that um, God delights him and he was meant to bring justice. So this justice, I believe is speaking about how the Gentiles have been kept out of this redemption plan, but now, the time is coming, and even now, as we are here, we are part of. We are part. Of, when he speaks of Gentiles, is you and I that is speak that are speaking of, that we are now brought into the family of God, and 
he has now brought justice in the earth. He has now undone what the devil has done, you know, in the earth. And if anybody that comes to him can receive that justice of what the um and and live in that justice, and the coastland shall wait for his law. So he's speaking about how Jesus was not just going to be the savior of Israel, but the savior of the world. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens stretch them out and spread for the earth that comes from it who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk on it so this is a, a, a quite a loaded verse but it's a lot of things here i mean this this um as i have this is a side note but this as i have for the two verse five there's a is a bible scholar who was also a scientist and he uses the bible he uses i don't know how to describe it but he he explains science through the bible i don't know if i'm saying it correctly and this and this he created the heavens and stretched them um, out and scientists when they look into the heaven when they look into space they say that the the space goes on for miles like it just keeps it keeps going it's like a never ending like just continuum and then you get, and there's some things called black holes that you enter. And what happens when you enter is you get stretched. So this is proof of what these scientists have found that it says here, God created the heavens and stretched them out. Amen. But that's just side notes. Um, and it says, who gives breath to the people on it and spirits to those who walk on it. So the people that are permitted to function on it are those who have breath in them and those who are people that are walking with spirits inside so that's why spirits are actually not don't have legal right to function on this realm verse six ha, we'll finish this thing hmm, i think we will i the lord have called you in righteousness i will hold your hand i will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people as a light to the gentiles Again, this is talking about Israel, not Israel, sorry, Jesus, and how he has called him and he is holding his hand. So Jesus was not alone here on earth. He was helped by his father, helped by the Holy Ghost to make sure that he is given as a covenant. So Jesus, God kept him, you know, and, and you see many times Jesus said, oh, my time has not come. My time has not come. Many times they tried to kill Jesus before his time, but they couldn't kill him. There was one time where they tried to stone him, but the Bible tells us, us, tells us that he slipped away. So the Lord kept him until it was time for him to be given as a covenant. So remember in the in the in the upper room, not in the upper room, sorry, in the last supper, when Jesus said, This is my body, this is my blood, this is a covenant. So God Jesus was given as a covenant to the people. So, so God was one that actually gave up his son. That's, what, that's why it said in John 3, 16, for God to love the world that he gave. So this is what it's talking about here in Isaiah 2, verse 6. As a light to the Gentiles, yes, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from prison. I'm flying through this. I'm on verse 7 now, 42, verse 7. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. This is a spirit, spiritual prison, spiritual blindness, by the way. Um, those who are in the prison of, of, of their belief, blinded by what they believe. We went for an evangelism, spoke to a, spoke to a guy. He, he just, he was so adamant about what he believed. That is the veil that's blinding them. So it's not oh, it's not just talking. Yes, there's a spiritual blind, a physical blindness that God has, Jesus can definitely heal. But a, a more a more devastating one, I believe, is spiritual blindness. Verse 8: I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, verse 9: the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And we see, and that's and that's kind of a lovely way to end that section of this verse, because the first nine verses there, we see, um, we see God um What's it called? God, this the prophesying about Jesus. Jesus is the new thing that's gonna come to pass, and he says, "Before they spring forth, I tell you of them." He's told Isaiah of them so many years ago before they even happened. So, 
and he's, he's like he's like god is like talking in the future but he's not like it's and this is this the verse kind of shows us how god really is outside of time so he's telling isaiah that former things this thing that this new thing of bringing jesus to the earth has not even happened yet but he's telling isaiah that this is a former thing that has come to pass already and i'm telling you before they happen so we can really see that how god is really you know seeing everything from his own perspective and it's outside of time um anyway for verse 10 sing to the lord a new song and his praise from the ends of the earth you who go down to the sea and all that is in it you coastlands and inhabitants of them so so yeah so it's telling us to sing to the lord praise his name all so now we, we can even look at this in hindsight after that prophecy now we're seeing all these people of the earth praise him you coastlands you, you inhabitants um praise him you who go down to the sea and all that is in it praise him so i mean i don't know that verse could be talking about um talking about the people who lived fishermen i don't know why that might be it but i don't know oh then 11 oh, i hope i did okay 11 oh it's not a cut off on the side okay 11 it says in verse 11 let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voices the villages that kada inhabits let the inhabitants of sela sing let them shout from the top of the mountains let them give glory, verse 12. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man and he shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud and he shall prevail against his enemies. I may, I have held my peace a long time, verse 14, and I have been still and assured myself. Now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and gasp at once. I will lay way. So again, um uh, I don't know if we're gonna to to finish this because <laughs> there's so many there's so many verses. Maybe we'll stop, maybe we'll stop at um maybe we'll stop at maybe sixteen. Yeah, maybe we'll stop at sixteen so that we'll have time to pray. So it says, I will lay waste to the mountains and hills and dry up all the vegetation. I will make the rivers coastland. I will dry up the pools. I will bring the blind by a way that they, didn't, they did not know. And I will lead them. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness lie before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. So it says... Um, here in verse 16 and as, let's just move on to verse 17 as well because it kind of continues from there it says they shall be torn back they shall be greatly ashamed who trust in carved images and who say to modern images you are gods let's go to verse 18 hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see so it's talking about here how Jesus is going to begin to lead those who are blind into, into the paths that they have not known and make darkness like light before them and make crooked places straight. So just uh, when Jesus came, showing the Gentiles the way to, to, to God, even not just the Gentiles, the Jews also that, that you know, became Christians, he showed them the way that they have not known and that even though they, they was being prophesied, but they didn't really understand. And I believe God is still doing the same thing, even with us now. And yes, we might we know God, we do, and we we are we are we are serving Him. But I believe that there is so much more that He wants us to know. And so He's the the the, the Christian journey, especially with God, because God is endless. If you if today you said you wanted to search all of England, okay, you know all of England. But yeah, even if in even England. You in a couple of weeks, maybe a year or two, you can search all of it. No, go everywhere. It's and because it's it's limited. But with God, is God is unlimited, and so there's never a stop. Once you get saved, there's never a stopping in our journey with God, and so we should still, we should not arrive at a place 
where oh yes I've, I've known everything now everything's everything's chill no we should still seek after him to know more to learn more to to and as we do that he's making crooked places straight and he's making us to know him more and there's always benefits of knowing him more there's always there's always a benefit and and even if there's no benefit per se you know the, the 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 joy of being with him the joy of spending time with him the joy of getting to know him more should be enough to to keep us following him and i pray that as we do that the lord will honor us and help us and he will not forsake us in jesus name so let's end it there because of time and then whoever is starting next week will continue from verse 16 uh, no 19 19 19 19 yes so whoever's teaching next week will continue from there and the lord will help us in jesus name 